Hello everyone, today we will be going over 2001 USAMO problem number 3. So here's the view of this problem. We are given positive uh, real numbers A, B and C and these satisfy the following equation. And we would like to show that this inequality here given holds. In fact, uh, we can do better than that and we can even show that it's also possible to show that this expression is also greater than or equal to zero. So that's why I will call this the lower bound and I will, would like to call this the upper bound and I will solve the problem in two steps. But before I do that, let's make some um, key observations. For example, by just looking at the equation that these three um, variables satisfy, it's obvious that A, B, C, uh, let me write that down here, A, B, C are definitely less than or equal to 2. Otherwise, if even if one of them is greater than 2, the, this whole expression, the left-hand side, will definitely exceed 4 because A, B, and C are non-negative. So therefore, we know that A, B, C will be in this range, obviously. Okay, going back to the question, let's start with the lower bound, which is pretty easy uh, to, to prove. So what I would like to show is our expression here, AB plus BC plus CA minus ABC is greater than or equal to zero. So we need one key uh, observation here. And these three numbers, ABC, at least one of them must be less than or equal to one. So let me write that down and then let's discuss it its implication so at least one of abc is less than or equal to one why would that be because obviously if all of them are equal to one then the total is four even if one of them is slightly more than one then it means the other one will be less than one obviously so that observation is is definitely true and it is almost trivial to see that but let's say that um, the one which is less than or equal to one say um, a is less than or equal to one this implies uh, if you will this should imply that one minus a is greater than or equal to zero so that will turn out to be a useful uh, identity and obviously now let's go ahead and try to prove that lower bound AB plus BC plus CA um, minus ABC is actually equal to well uh, what I will do is I will um, take the common um, common parentheses I guess so I would like to show that, well, this term here and this term, they have an A in common. So I would definitely have A, B plus C. And then the remaining two terms, this one and this one, they have a BC in common. So what I will do is I will say plus BC, 1 minus A. And sure enough, that does the trick because this expression is definitely greater than or equal to zero, as we suggested over here. And the, the other terms are already positive anyway, so that expression is definitely greater than or equal to zero. So that completes the first part of the proof where we prove the lower bound. Now, for this expression, we also need an upper bound. So that, that one is slightly involved. So what I will do is, huh? so let's write that down. And let's start with some simple... Um, key facts let's say um, so we are now going over the upper bound so what I would like to make now is another key critical observation and it is the fact that at least two of a B and C are greater than or equal to one or less than or equal to one so that's also very very trivial because um, if all, th uh, well, um, obviously all three um, being equal to one, it already satisfies these conditions. And um, you cannot have all three um, in, in one way or the other. So, I mean, all three less than one, strict less than one, or all three greater than one, that won't work, right? Because if all three are strictly greater than one, 
it would the outcome for the equation will be more than four if all three are less than one then that would be strictly less than four so it must be the case that some of them are greater than or equal to one some of them are less than or equal to one so let's assume uh, without loss of generality so without loss of generality let's assume uh, let um let's say b c uh, b and c uh, be um be these two uh, numbers huh? so what I mean is B and C are on one side of one and A is on an other side of one huh? so so what I mean here is if you call this number as one so uh, apparently B and C will happen to be on one side of one and A would be on the other side it doesn't matter if it is B C greater than one or A less than one or B C less than one and A greater than one so having said that this uh, expression obviously this uh, observation can be mathematically represented as um, so therefore this implies 1 minus b times 1 minus c is greater than or equal to 0 so that simply tells you that b and c are on the same side of 1 so 1 will split the real line into two pieces to rays so b and c will be on the same side of the ray so what i will do is i will call this relationship as one so that's the first relationship i called it one and i call this one the initial condition given as two so let me make sure it is uh, so that one is two so and finally i would also like to write also hmm, the trivial inequality regarding b and c so in that particular case, my claim is that b minus um, c squared is definitely greater than or equal to zero. So all I will be doing is, uh, so rewrite it carefully. Um, so therefore, I would have b squared plus um, c squared is greater than or equal to 2bc actually. Okay, so with those two results, I well that I I will decide to call this one as result three. That would be number three. So let me go ahead and combine two and three to start manipulating these expressions. So I will open a new page here. So and then combine two and three. So two and three uh, would imply that a squared plus uh, well, uh, 2bc, right? So I, I'm replacing um, b squared plus c squared with 2bc plus abc. Obviously, b, b squared plus c squared is greater than 2bc. Therefore, we're making this whole left-hand side less than or equal to 4. And after we group them and send the a, so, so move that a squared to the left-hand side. So what I will have is bc times a plus 2 is strictly less than or equal well less than or equal to 4 minus a squared and knowing that a plus 2 is strictly greater than 0 I can divide both sides of this expression by a plus 2 and therefore I would get that bc is less than or equal to 2 minus a and I will call this relationship the fourth relationship all I'm, I will do now is combine the first and this fourth uh, relationship so remember that this was the fourth relationship here so therefore i would get a um b plus b c plus c a minus a b c less than or equal to a b and i'm going to go ahead and replace b c with this new thing here uh, plus 2 minus a plus and i will group these things here a c uh, i believe it is 1 minus b here so therefore i will just go ahead and manipulate these expressions so i have 2 minus a times all the remaining terms have an a in it 1 plus b c minus b minus c and finally i can factor them out nicely i would get 1 minus b, 1 minus c, and 
we already proved that 1 minus b times 1 minus c was greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, this whole thing is less than or equal to 2, actually. And that solves the upper bound of, of this problem. Now, finally, it would be nice to think about uh, the um, equality conditions here for the upper bound and the lower bound. So equality conditions. Well, for the um, upper bound first, it turns out, it, and it's not too difficult to see that um, ABC being 111 satisfies the upper bound, obviously. So if you plug in 111, you will get a 2 here. It's also possible that any permutation of, of root 2, root 2, 0 will also do the trick. Um, because root 2 times root 2 will give you a 2 from one of these first three terms, and the rest is all zeros. Okay, so for the lower bound, well, it turns out that that case is simpler. And we have only one option here. Any permutation of 2, 0, 0 will actually give a lower bound for this inequality. When I say a lower bound, I mean this being greater than or equal to 0. And will also satisfy the first constraint at the same time. So that solves our problem. Uh, hope to see you in our next video.